braiding and how to deal with that. Yep. That's like a All right, we're going. And as is often the case, does this happen to you, Michelle? You run out of time? You got so much more to cover? Uh, no, we always get through everything. <laughs> well, so we're, we got three minutes for each activity. Um, so really, at this point, when does this session wrap up? About 5? 5.30. 5.30. So we have about an hour. So it's going to be tight. So what I really want to focus on is important stuff. But it's going to be require some focus. You can play endlessly. And like I said, I played this for two hours, and that was it. That's all it took for me to convert. And I'll tell you one of the biggest things that caused me to convert is I used to give a lot of forum postings. I said, every week you have to post something. And it was usually an assignment. Go do this and do this. But to grade them in Blackboard was really a drag. Because I had to open the grade book, and I had to open the forum and have two windows, and then say, OK, did he post anywhere down there? And it just and I opened up Moodle, and there was a grade attached to the forum. It's like, wow, you can read it, grade it, you're done. That was pretty cool. And then the other thing was this subscription thing. And this is confusing. When a student leaves their, their profile unchanged, it means that whenever they post to a forum, they will be auto-subscribed. That means that they will get emails from any posts on that forum. And I do a forum or two or three every week of 16 weeks. So that poor first person who posts the first assignment, every time someone posts after that, they're getting an email. That's a setting in your profile. And if you look at it, it will say, automatically subscribe me to forums when I post. You can turn that off or on. Martin Dubiamas, the founder of Moodle, it says on video that that's a controversial thing to have that be the default, because you get a lot of emails. But it's something he feels adamantly about. And I tend to agree. If you don't like the emails, learn what you need to do to stop getting them. But if you don't get them, you will be so disconnected from the class, you may just never log back in. So as a preference, <coughs> that subscription option for all homeworks, I now set that to yes initially. So everyone will get emails of all the assignments turned in until they consciously go and unsubscribe. So if you know what you're doing and you don't want any of them, you can just go on that one form page and no, 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 no. But until then, you're going to get it until you know better. And that's just a, a judgment. Um, so what else? So a couple people have asked the, the thing about editing on the main page. You go here. It's important to know if you don't see your editing tools, what does that mean? Yeah, magic button, right? So sometimes you go in and you're new and you think, what? And then you get confused because you go to a class where you're not a teacher. And there is no button. button. And you realize, wait, I'm a little person now. I'm a puppet. Right? So we turn editing on. And so you have a label for each section. This is for this, this is for this, this is for this, this is for this, and so on. But you can also add labels at any time. So I have you all go to add a resource, go ahead and do this, and choose insert a label. And you can you recognize the interface, it's the exact same thing I was looking at before, only this is a freeform label, you can put it anywhere you want. So I'm just going to write on um, getting started, because all the People who do distance ed say that that's important to have something to, to go to first. And I'm going to put a colon on it, and I'm going to make it red. So it really sticks out. I'm going to make it bold, and I'm going to say. So you see how it looks. And again, I'm not advocating use of the wood theme, but to each his own, right? It gives me that earthy feel. I'm going to start a fire. I heat with wood, so it's not that I'm higher. So that's a label. So throughout your course, anytime you want to put a little note of clarification or an announcement. So if I just want to do an announcement, school canceled today, or go home and read CNN, because we're not letting you back to the building for two weeks. So add a label, and I say class canceled. And I could actually move this up here. Where's the boundary? You see? 
So, but that doesn't look very much like an announcement. So what do I do? I can make that a header one. And now, let's hope they get the message. And then as soon as that day has passed, I can delete it. Now you've got to be careful putting things out there. What I would do is I would go to news and announcements and send, put a post out, and it would get emailed to everybody, and they would get the message. But some teachers prefer to do it this way. The challenge with this is there's no archive of it. There's no record that you did that. So you can say, you're a jerk. And the next day, you just delete it. There, you can maybe go to the logs. Um, so that's a label. So you know how to add labels throughout. So under getting started, I might have technology orientation. Make sure you have an adequate machine. Here's the ADA office, the disabilities office for, for issues if you need someone to sign for you or transcribe uh, podcasts. Um, here's the lab hours. Here's campus parking instructions, all that stuff. And I would put that personally in week one. So how do I move this getting started down to week one? How do I move it? The Amtrak sign, right? So you click the Amtrak sign, and then you go to where you want to move it to, the destination. And uh, in the future versions, I'm playing around on the test site, you can actually drag these, drag and drop them, which is pretty neat. Um, it's, it uses some cool new technologies, but you just want, you can move this whole block down there just by dragging. As it is now, you have to move up and down this way. <coughs> well, so far I don't have any content in two and three, so what might be appropriate to do with them? Item. Item. If you're not there for a purpose, keep it simple on the students. They don't like to see blank things. They expect the stuff to be there. And I need to go back to my settings and find out whether or not I have that show hidden settings. Because I probably have showing hidden that's collapsed. Whereas I want to turn it off altogether. Questions? Ready to go? Keep going? Okay. Let's have a quick look at these other things because these are important and they're easy. Compose a text page. A text page is simply you want to write some text that you link to from the main page. I might do this if I'm teaching Java or HTML and I just want to give them some simple, here's a sample code. But there's no formatting allowed. So if you want to do any bold, italic, underline, don't do that. That's like Notepad. So this is Notepad and Moodle. So I'm not even going to do it because most of that you can do it with a web page as well. So instead, I'll jump to Compose a Web Page. Compose a web page gives you the WYSIWYG tools, but it's just like the label, only instead of being on the page, it creates a link and it's a second page. And we have the option of having it open in this window or opening as a second window. So we're going to do that as a second window. And let's just say class notes. These are the bullet points, the objectives for that week. Right? So we're going to compose a web page, go ahead and do this. And the name will be first steps. And the summary will be things you need to do. And don't worry too much about what you write. But that, that would be something like, here's a getting started checklist. right? And I can come back and rename it. I say, you know, checklist actually is better. Getting started checklist. That's a good name, right? So I put that there. And then I'll say, um, learn to read your reading assignments. <laughs> Why they like <laughs> Um, and notice I'm putting dashes. Well, I don't need to do that. I've got a bullet tool built in. Learn to read your assignments and kill your feet. Okay? Nice and simple. So don't worry about what you're saying. This is just so you know how to do it. So our next setting, <coughs> if I'm in a hurry, I just go ahead and, and submit. Notice on most of these pages it says visible to puppies, which for you as students. And it defaults to show, because why would you create it if you, if you wanted it to be invisible? But if you're in draft mode and you're just working on it now, you want to change that to, to start it out invisible. And that saves you the trouble of having to make it invisible later. I almost never do that because I'm doing it right then and there. In fact, I'm usually like a week behind. So I wish I could go back and send it to that Russian guy so he could do the time travel thing. Um, so I save changes. And then it, it samples it for me. As soon as you save changes, it shows you what you created. This is what a student's going to see. But wait a minute. Is this what I want a student to see? What did I want? Did I want it to open in the main window? I wanted a new window. I want a pop-up. Normally, pop-ups are bad. But in this case, I'd like the course to be my platform, a launch platform. And the other windows come out in front of it. And then they just close them and they leave the course there. So how do I go back and edit it? 
Anytime you're in the item itself, there's a button to update this resource, which is just like clicking the edit button on the main page. Cool? So I click that, and where are my settings to open in the second window? Yeah, so a lot of people, for years they've been teaching Moodle, they just never bothered clicking that. Right? They're like, oh wow, cool. So click on show settings. And what do I want? New window. New window. Bada boom, bada bing. So now we're going to try that. Notice that you can change the size. If it's really tiny, mine is tiny, right? So I'm only going to make it uh, 200 high. Save it. Now again, it will proof it for me. But it's trying to launch it, right? But I've got pop-up blocking on. So I say OK, and I go up to my pop-up blocking. And I say, I'll always allow pop-ups from Moodle, in this case, which I want. OK? But now I need to actually refresh it to get a pop-up, or I'll click here. Is this what I wanted? Yeah. Does that look good? No. Why not? It's too small. It's too small? Well, that should be plenty of room for two bullet items. Take out your toolbars. Exactly. So close it, update this resource, and down here, I uncheck all of these except the top two. Why? Because if I had a lot of stuff, it'd be impolite not to let you scroll to see it and or make the window bigger. But all the other stuff, I don't care. This is just for my course. You don't need the URL. You don't need the forward back button. You're just going to close the window. So now, what do we have? And often I find that the preview mode doesn't do a good job of launching the second page or it does in the background. So you can test it by clicking here. And that looks a little better, doesn't it? So I do this for all my objectives and any little notes. Any short reading materials or even long reading materials that take place in my course, I do this way. You've got a quizzical look on your face. Well, with the name of the page being first steps and the only place you see it is that little tiny bar up there. Okay, but, but hear, hear me out here. This is, the, this is the, the mode, like the edit mode. Now we go back to the item and this is what you see. Why do you bring that up as a web page and not just a um, text page? Because I like to have the formatting, like the bullet list, for example. I made that as bullet. Text page wouldn't look Text is like notepad. You've got nothing. Oh, okay. I don't even think you can change the font. It's just Ooh. as simple as it in text. Not You're looking text, at the summary. The summary so yeah. remember, when you go to create this, the top is the summary. Before that is the title. So the title is what they see on the page. The summary is what they see when they go and look at all of them, like here. See that? So there's the title and the description. Don't confuse the description with the content. Okay? And I will say, this is just like when you get a new cell phone, the best way to learn how to use it is not to read the manual, but to just go try every menu option step by step. But there's thousands of options, right? So Moodle has billions of permutations. So the only way to really do it is to do it. Go and say, I don't understand. Oh, go back there. Oh, I, and eventually there are, I, I guarantee you there are inconsistencies. Why is it a, an icon here but a button there? Why is it on the right there and not here? But once you learn those inconsistencies, again, it's like being married to someone that you love for 10 years as opposed to dating somebody that you're interested in. You know them well, but you also know the challenges in that relationship. And I say this because I've been married 16 years. I have five kids. Um, but I'm happy to be married to my wife, but I also know all the things. So in Moodle, you learn, you know, that should be this way. Well, it's not. So you've got to deal with it until the next version. <laughs> okay, so that was adding a web, a web page. So now here's, here's what the student goes through. They log in, they click the link, and it pops up as a window, and they read that, and then they're done, and they close it. Cool? That good? All right, what's the next thing here? Link to a file or a website. Very, very useful. Say that there's a great site, CNN, BBC News, whatever. Somebody name a site worth going to right now. MySpace. <laughs> okay, just to save you time so you can waste more time in class, let's go to MySpace. Link to a file or website. Pretty self-explanatory on these. What's the name? MySpace. Now, actually, what you could do is you could link that to your teacher MySpace. And summary, a little more explanation, a link to the vein of all web designers. <laughs> and teachers. And librarians. And librarians. Okay. <laughs> Location, www.myspace.com. <coughs> you need to include the uh, HTTP. It puts it there by default, but if you delete it, it'll try and find the local file. Okay, 
Do we want to search for it? We've already got the web page. We don't need to worry about that. Do we want the same window or a different window? Do the same thing. So what do I do? New window. I uncheck these others. Cool? What's this parameters business? This is for the real geeks. Parameters allows it to take some settings from Moodle, like your ID and your course, and put them in a query string that is sent to that other website. So say you have a teaching a company that you pay $2,000 a year to have their quiz modules, but each of your students has to go create an account and so on. Well, you can say, look, guys, we're going to send you a link. We're going to have a link that, that puts this information inside uh, the, the, the HTTP request. So we want single sign-on. We want them to just be in based on the information we have. Or they say, well, your code is CEP7. All your students need to use that code when they log in. Well, heck, just let me give you that code in my click, in my URL, so my students will just go there and they'll be in. So it involves some cooperation on the other end, but if you do any kind of development or your people do development, it's a neat feature. But I won't go into that. So save changes, and we go back and test it from the main page, MySpace. There you go, right? In all her glory. Cool? Any questions about that? No? Quick note about files. I want to link to files. Remember what I said? You have a bunch of files. You zip them and you upload them. <coughs> Linking to files or using files for something is typically a two-step process. You upload them and you connect to them. However, the way you do it in Moodle tends to do it backwards, so I, discourage, I encourage you to upload first and then worry about what you're going to do with them. So if you know you need files, upload. If you go the other way, it'll feel like a two-step process because it really is. So how do we go to our files area in your course? Under admin? Files. Okay. So go there. So you basically have here a file manager. Just like in Windows or Mac or whatever. It looks a little primitive. It's kind of like the old Windows file manager or an FTP client. Um, backup data it keeps backing up your course every morning at 3 a.m. Uh, in this case, I'm not sure what NDTC zip is, but I could unzip it to see. It's 63 meg, so I unzip. And that's got a bunch of pictures. What are they? Notice what it did. It converted the zip file into a folder. And now I can look in the folder. And I'll click on one. And there we have a student. She's not paying much attention. <laughs> okay. So, are any of you in this course? This is Moodle 1. So you can go get your picture and add it to your profile, but we'll save that for a minute. So, let's say that I have a bunch of stuff on my hard drive, and you guys know that there's something on that computer. We don't know what. But you have a bunch of files. So, let's make a folder, and we'll just call it uh, Hemp underscore upload to tell us that we got this, but we haven't really organized it very well. And we'll go into it by clicking on it. And if you feel like you can't keep up, you know, just watch. I think it's pretty straightforward, but people get confused about some of the different buttons, and it takes just a little practice. Just keep doing it. So move on. Got a folder. We're in the folder. Now I go to upload a file, and it gives me a typical browse button, and it browse. Now I'm in my computer. Well, here's the problem is I don't want to upload one file and one file and one file. What do I want to do? I want to zip them. So let's just say we take, uh, where can we find lots of files? In here, right? How much is all, do you think these are all big? Let's go, how do I open Windows Explorer in Windows? What's the shortcut keys for Windows Explorer? Windows E. Windows E, here's my documents. How do I zip all of these? Send to, right click and send, right -click and, uh, send to, compressed. Cannot be performed, uh, blah, 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 well, contains the characters. Well, yeah. All right, well, okay, so which one, which one didn't work? We'll try that one. My ebooks, right? I think it was resources that didn't cooperate. So I'm going to get everything except this resources.
You all know what I'm trying to do here, right? Mm -hmm. Did that work? Send to. Yeah, it doesn't even like, so I really need something that has. Well, we'll, we'll stick with. It would with like resources. It doesn't like any of those. Yeah, we'll pictures in the next one. Do I have music, too? Yeah, I've got music and pictures, so we'll keep it simple. I want to do the music and the pictures, so I get the two of them, send to compress folder, and now I have it's my music and it's five megs. You all with me? I didn't. I hope I didn't lose anybody there. So I go back here, and now we have, is it called my, always good to remember what you called it, it's called my music. So I don't see it, I see it here, but that's the folder, right? Don't see it? Last one. Is it the last one? But there it was called My Pictures. And here's called My it's Music. It's in the documents folder. <laughs> ah, yes. Joy, joy, joy. Okay, so where do I want to get to that one? Um, it was Users and Groups. All Users. Um, documents Setting, All Users. Documents. Shared Documents. There we go. So that was all pretty painful. But if you got your, if you got your act together on your computer, like at our site, we have a U drive, which is where we put all our files. And I've got them organized by class. And I've got like CSC 148 slideshows. So go to that thing and zip it. In this case, I'm working with something I've never seen before. But this could also be the CD from your publisher. But you need to move the contents to your hard drive before you zip it, right? Because the CD is read only. So upload this file. It's churning. Remember, that was about five megs. So depending on what you guys are doing. But it's really cool because you can upload these massive, like, 58 megs of hundreds and hundreds of files. Like, the publisher gives me all these lab files for HTML, the images, the CSS files, the icons, the GIFs. And uh, so this will take a minute. And once it d goes there, all I do is click unzip, and it recreates the same folder structure that was in the original. So in this case, it has my documents and my, I mean, my folder, my music, my images, right? There you go. All I do is unzip it. Now, how quick was that? It's a lot of files in a very short time, right? Imagine uploading those one at a time or even eight at a time. It would be a, a drag. I say OK. And now I've got a recreation of those folders. So I can delete this one. How do you think I delete it? You check it and with chosen files. Delete. You sure? So it doesn't, doesn't do it first try. It makes me confirm, which is good. I say yes. Now I've got my music. Check it out. All these files. And I've got my pictures. Sample pictures, right? Blue Hill Sunset. You all are familiar with those images, right? Unfortunately. So now I have files. And, and if I want, you notice your navigation trail. So if we want to go back to the root of our files area, we can click right there. And you see, we have temp upload. So that's we know that's where it put. So I want to take those pictures and bring them out. Check my pictures with chosen files. Move. And it says, one file selected for moving. Now go to the destination and press move files to here. Where's my destination? I want to move it out. Where's my destination? Parent folder. Parent folder or files. They're both in the same place. And now? What I click? Beautiful. Move files here. So there my pictures are. Now I go to the home page. I say, I want the blue flowers. I want the purple flowers on the top of my course as my header. <coughs> what do I do? How do we edit the header? Pencil. Little pencil. pencil. So click here. How do we add a picture? Decide where you want it first. So let's put it at the beginning. Ooh, there we go. Image. Notice it's showing my files here. Mm -hmm. Where's my picture? Click there, click there, and water lilies. And it previews it for me on the right. Now don't do that. This is a big picture. You don't need this kind of big picture. You're better off editing it the way you want it before you upload it. But like I said, if you want to go ghetto, we're doing it. <laughs> so I picked that image. Notice the minute I clicked on it, it put the URL up there already. I have to put an alt tag so that we're compliant with ADA, which is that we have an alternate representation for images. So I'll just put sample from Microsoft Water Lilies. 
And also, notice there's size and alignment. I'll leave that alone for now. And now I got this big old picture. Obviously, it's like problem there, right? If you want to be ghetto, we can just resize it this way. In my case, I want it to be a header, so I'm going to resize it the long way. And I'm going to put a little character term here. And I'll go like so. And like so. So you can play all day long with this, but a header would look something more like that. Right? Bear in mind, you have to look at your audience. So you have three columns. And you have a 17-inch monitor at 1024 by 768, right? Some of them might have these two pagers or dual monitors. Some of them might have an old 15-inch set at 800 by 600. So you just made their whole page get all mucked up. I expect 1024 by 768 or better. You know, so if I'm designing for that, I think it'll look good for me. Cool? So we did what? We added a label. We added a created a text page, I mean a web page, which is like a text page, but more richer. We linked to a website. We linked to a, a we didn't link to a file yet. That's what we're doing here. So add a resource. I want to link to all my pictures. No, I want to link to the music. Link to a file or website, display a directory. Wait, but we didn't link to an individual file yet, did we? Let's do that. By the numbers, some file. I don't know which one I'm linking to yet, so I'm making it up as I go. Choose or upload a file. Click that. Look familiar? We're back in our file manager area. So I want to go into uh, temp upload, my music, sample music, album art small. Where's the music? WMA, Beethoven Sympathy. Sym Symphony. Symphony. <laughs> Symphony. And here's, this is also, this interface needs a lot of help. Once you use it, you get used to it. But you have to scroll over and pick the choose link. You think you would check it or something or click on it? If you click on it, it starts to play. So you need to choose, and that adds it, and now, what do we do? Do I pick choose? I don't think we do. Um, I think we're actually, we've done it. No, we have to click on it and choose choose. Um, click it. No, no, no I, I, I picked it on the right. Why isn't that working? I think, don't you have to check it when you choose? Well, no, if you, if you check it, there's no, no choose option. I would expect it to have populated it right here. Let me try with something something simpler. See, it just went there and closed it. So for whatever reason, that picture's one. By the way, when you name your folders before you zip them, don't put spaces in them. It's something Windows and Mac do all the time, but websites don't like spaces. So when you upload it, it'll automatically put underscores of your file name, but since they were zipped, it couldn't get to them, so it didn't know. So it'll deal with them, but not well. So get all those files tidy before you upload them, because when you change them later, they break the links in your course and, and so on. So there's a little bit of pre-planning coming in. So I go to my music, maybe, um, maybe Beethoven was not happy, Blues, New Story, Blues Highway, choose. That worked, right? Again, I don't like file names with spaces in them, but it'll do. Same window, well, this is WMA, so we don't quite know how it's going to open. So I would say same window, and if it's a bad window, we just close it. But it's probably going to try and open a, 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 a player. So put resource in a frame, no. Let's do new window, same as before, and save changes. And now I go to home, and now we have some file. Click it, and what's it doing? It launches, it launches the uh, player that's on this machine. If it were Winamp or whatever, um, if you can do Flash, it'll play right within the browser. But you see, that's easy. That could have been PowerPoint, could have been PDF, could have been Word, you name it. Link it to a file is easy. So we've linked to a file, but we have, now we say, let's link to that directory. What's the option? Yeah. Display a directory. Very simple. I'll say my picks. The sample MS picks. And Notice the drop-down shows me all the directories in my file area. So this could get unwieldy if you had a lot of them. But in this case, I just look for, I moved it to my pictures, right? And save changes. And that's what's going to show me. So this is beautiful because all I have to do, see how it shows up as a folder? I click on it, and there's a directory. So if you're in a hurry, this could be 32 chapters of PowerPoint presentations. 
you just put them there in the top of your course. And then later in time, you can say, okay, chapter one links to that and chapter two. But think how fast you can do that. I mean, I've, I've already created a link to a file and a link to a folder, which could be hundreds of files, while I was discussing it with you in a couple of minutes. And believe me, I've timed myself just for fun. I'll have you guys time me and just go, and I, I can get 37 things up there and accessible in a matter of two minutes. But you have to know where they are on your hard drive. And, you know, we all go through that, that stuff. So that's it for resources, just about. Um, and insert a label, which we've done. So resources, again, things you look at. And that could be any file type. PDF, Doc, PowerPoint, XLS, SWF, Flash Reader, Flash Paper, SVG files, TIFF, GIF, blah, blah, blah. Right? Good? OK. And now I feel like I'm really rushing, because we haven't got the activities yet. So we talked a little bit about forums. And what I always do in my courses, news and announcements, is read only and pushed out to everybody. I do a social forum, which anybody can post, anybody can reply, and it's not pushed out to anybody. Sometimes I want to do it initially so they know it's there, because otherwise they might not, but that's a judgment call. Um, and then I do the class discussions. I push that out to everyone. I turn read tracking on. Um, and anyone can post and anyone can reply. And I push it out initially, but you can unsubscribe later. And that way, everyone is getting all the discussion posts that relate to the class. And I tell them, do not email me. Because I will get the email when you post here, and my filter will red flag it. But if you email me on the side, I'm going to look at it and say, I think it's an emergency. And if it's not an emergency, you're just going to bug me. And I'll reply to them and say, I'll answer this question when you post it on the forum. And the reason that's so critical is it's not fair for you to give them hints without giving everyone the class hints. And it's not reasonable to think it's an active class if you're having one-on-one -on -one dialogue with people when you should be having a group dialogue. Okay? So, you've done forums. Let's look at the activities. The bread and butter, or rather the meat and potatoes, in my mind, are forums, assignments, and quizzes. If you, could do, if you got rid of all this other stuff, I'd still be a huge fan of Moodle. Some of this stuff is really cool. Each one of them is probably worthy of a one or a two hour workshop. Just don't have time. But you have, you'll have access to the site for at least a month. He's going to leave them up there. Um, certainly if you email me, I'll give you an account on my site you can play with. You can go play at moodle.org. There's lots of places for you to play around. When you actually want to run a live course for yourself, I can talk to you about options. Okay? So, we've done forums. Questions about forums? Y'all comfortable with those? Okay, so next thing, we'll do an assignment. And this is where we get into, there's a lot of settings. With power comes complexity. So you need to take it upon yourself to explore the little help files here. But some of it is self-explanatory. Assignment name, well, not too hard. So we could say, um, put your picture in your profile. Description, the teacher took pictures of you. Get them somehow. By the way, if you go into Moodle 2, in the files, there should be a link to files that has all of your photos in it. So, teacher took pictures of you, get them somehow, and upload yours to your profile. Then, take, copy and paste the link to your profile into this assignment. Okay, how many points? I like 10. I did 10 for anything unless I have a reason not to. But it could be 100, it doesn't really matter because you can wait the grade book any way you want. Available and due date. When do you want it to turn on? When did I have to have it done? <clears throat> I don't mess with that. I turned it on yesterday and I turned it off in two years. A lot of the teachers like due dates. In the general, the commonly accepted knowledge is if you have due dates, students will be more focused on things. For me, it just means I have to go and give them exceptions to due dates more often. So for me, it's the due date is the end of the semester. But so you can do that. For now, I'm going to turn it on because when we're testing in this environment, you better have the minutes just right, or else you won't see it, it won't be available, and you wonder why. So if it's not available, the first thing to do is check and see the due dates because you may have it turning off 2005, which means it never turned on. So if you're going to do due dates, you've got to manage due dates and uh, prevent late submissions. Basically. By default, late submissions, they can be turned in after the due date, but they'll be told it's overdue. And you'll see. I mean, you see the dates they turn them in. So if you're enforcing it, great. If you're not, you can still grade them. Um, assignment type, very important. Three types. 
Offline activity. This is where you give a grade, like in Blackboard, when you add a, an item in the grade book, but there's nothing that they have to do in Moodle to do it. So for example, class presentation. You're going to get up and talk for five minutes. I say, good job, and I go in there and say, you did a nice job. Or um, anything that, that can't take place in Moodle is an offline assignment. But you need to have a place in the gradebook for it, and you want to give them feedback. An online text is anything that they just include text on the page. So write a haiku. Post your thoughts on the museum exhibit, something like that. Um, typically, if it's a really long essay, you want to be careful, because you know how it is when you write on web pages, you can delete them. And then finally, upload a single file. So when they're doing Java homework, I have them zip their work and upload the zip file. If they're doing a web page, I have an online text, and they give me a link to their web page. In this case, what have I asked for? A link to their profile, because that's how I'm going to verify. So in this case, it would be online text. So I go there. Don't care about groups at the moment, want it visible. Now the assignment says two pages. The first page we just did, now there's a second page. So do we want to allow resubmitting? So that means if you get, got partial credit, and I say do it again, they can come back and basically edit it, and I can, it will update the last edited date. So I will see the date that I gave feedback and the date that they changed it. The downside is it doesn't track the history very well. So they change it, but I don't see the original copy if they got rid of it. So you have to deal with that. Um, so allow resubmitting, sure. Email alerts. Do I want to get an email whenever someone submits homework? In my case, I do because I filter them into a folder called to be graded. And I can get a quick feel of what needs grading without having to log into Moodle. But that depends on if you outlook or group-wise and how your filters work and so on. Yes, ma'am? No, it's just the way you by the way. OK. <laughs> so I'll say yes, comment in line. Comments in line is when you give feedback to the student, are you typing right in their submission? Because this is an online text. So if they had 10 questions, I could go right in there and I'll put the caps lock on and say, you didn't quite get the point on this, or why didn't you answer this question? Often my assignments, there'll be 10 questions. I say, paste the questions as a bullet list into the assignment and then answer each one. Or use complete sentences. You decide. But I don't want to wonder what you're answering. Um, and then I can quickly see that they, if there's 10 questions, I say two points each. They missed one. That's eight points right there before I've even read it. So comments in line, I'll say yes. Continue. And now this is what the student sees. The student, will, when they click the assignment, they'll see the teacher took pictures of you, blah, blah, blah. And then you have not submitted anything yet, and edit my submission. So the student will see this. So as a teacher, it's giving me the student view pretty quickly. So I click edit my submission, and this is where I would put, I say, oh no, I, I don't have it. I'm going to go to, uh, I'll open this and go to my, my page. So I copy this URL, and I paste it. So now that's one assignment. So this is the home page of the course. You see the assignment, put your picture in your profile. Now again, there's a problem with that long name, because that's what the gradebook's going to show. So I would call it like A1. And then they would know that A was assignment, or A was activity, or whatever your naming scheme is. If I really wanted a longer text, I would put a label above it. Right? And that's a problem that they really need to have two labels, one for the title and one for the gradebook. But there's no easy way around it. So what the student does is they go and they click here, and they get that. Notice in this case, it sees that this student, which is me, has already submitted it. So I can edit it because I allow resubmit. As a teacher, I see this, which sees that one person has done their work, and I can go grade it. And this is beautiful because you can get 60 people in a class, and you can just grade them very quickly. And this is the grading interface. This is what you see. You see who it is, the grade they've been given, a comment that you gave them, when it was last modified, and when you last modified it. Because this was them, this is you. And then I can grade them one at a time. But I don't like to say it's just a, did you do it or not? I check down here, quick grading. And now I can grade them all right in line, and hit save. So I've just graded the whole class. If it's easy, like, did you, did you show up today? He was there, he was there, where are you, psycho? He was there, he was there, safe. But if it's more complex and I need to read it and give feedback, I do this. I'll sort it by modified so that I don't waste time on those that haven't done anything. And I go to the first one, and I give them feedback, and I give them a grade, and then I click Save and Show Next. So it just cycles through them. And this is beautiful. 
It doesn't look like much now, but when you have 64 students and you degrade them all, my wife is in Senegal. Actually, she just got back yesterday, but she's a TA in our school. She does the CIS, CIS 110 with 200 students. And the grade book in Blackboard, she has to keep reloading the grade book and finding the person that submitted it. Whereas in Moodle, she just does this, grade, send, grade, send, grade, send. And the attachment is here, so it's a Word document, download, look, grade, send, and so on. I thought she would prefer Blackboard because of view complete, but she much prefers this. And she just says it's faster. So, so I, give, I give myself <coughs> one point, and I give feedback. I say, you didn't change the icon, you don't. Please fix and so save and show next. Okay? There, there is no next. What's that? I get in trouble for saying that. Dolt? I don't even know what it means. Like, write a definition of dolt. Okay, so, all right, so somebody else, who's, who is this? Is that me? I think I'm just recursively, recursively editing myself. Something. But, so you can see if we had a bunch of students, we see we have a bunch of students. The other thing I can do is if this takes up too much room, and I don't care about these fields, I can collapse them using JavaScript and just look at those things. So if it's too big or wide, because she's looking at 20 pages of this, 200 students. So that's an assignment. And the real way to do this, in an ideal world, we'd be doing a week-long workshop and we would all do assignments <coughs> and test them. It just takes too long. And I think you can see how rich the tool set here is. And I'll admit to wasting time on Moodle.org and these other things, but I think those are as important. But how to fit it all in this time is, is tricky. So we've got 20 minutes left, right? Am I right? Yep. So we've done forums, we've done assignments. Any questions about assignments? No? If, if they're writing like essays for English, yes. um, would you have to grade it? I mean, they would submit it. You can go two ways on that. See, I, I, I kind of dislike Word. I'm sick of administration sending out Word attachments for, for three bullet items. Put it in my email, just send me three bullet items. But they like word attachments. So I'm kind of down on word. However, it's not a good idea to compose an essay on a web page because you can lose it. And you want them to think about it. So what I would do is, if you don't care about formatting, I would say, you know, type it any way you want on your machine. And when you're ready, just paste it in here. You know, if it's a one page or a couple paragraphs or a short thing, um, type it in Word, type it in Notepad, type it in Word Ultra Edit or Simple Text. Um, but if it's a 10-page document and formatting and footnotes and things like that, I'd say do it in whatever you use, Word or WordPerfect or OpenOffice, and then attach it. So instead of instead of online text, it would be upload a single file. Cool? Now, there's some add-ons that somebody's done. I think they've done it at Blacksburg, where they have a peer review component where you can actually assign others to log in and look. What I really want to do is I want to figure out how to make assignments public. And then I could get rid of a lot of my forums the reason I use forms is I want the, your classmates to see your web page or your work, but they're much harder to grade because it's a three-step process, whereas here it's a one-step process. So I would rather do I would rather have a hybrid forum assignment module, but it doesn't exist yet. So again, that's one of those things where it bothers me, but it's still so much better than Blackboard that you know I take what I, I can get. Question. And if you have upload a single file to grade it, you must download it and make. Yeah, there's no way. I mean, there's no way for a web page to reliably open a Word document or, or a, some. They can open PDFs, and if you're using Internet Explorer, it can probably open Word or Excel or PowerPoint. Um, and that's just a decision you, you'll have to make. You want to open it up in a window like that. What my wife does because it's Office, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Access. She's just very much in the habit of right-click, save as into the folder, evaluate it, type your feedback, and move on. And put it back up? No, she doesn't. So how so, does the student sort of feedback? Um, well, she writes the feedback in the text area. Ah. She says, you know, in, it said you want header one and you didn't do that. So if you're, if you're trying page, to use Word and markup within the document. Like she would have to with her English paper. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, she have to send a file attachment by email? Yeah, no, no. Um, see, that's the thing is you, you shouldn't have to use email. I'm wondering if. You know, I'd have to try that. Um, I'm sure it's not something new, because also you can use new features in Office to show changes. So it's good if you're moving a file back and forth, like re-edit this, and so they look at your suggestions and you, you annotate. Okay, can, um, they, can they do that with each other? Like if you put them in peer editing groups? Well, that's where that, that guy who did the additional module comes in. What I encourage people, initially, to use a forum, 
unless it's private. Like if it's a, if it's an essay, if they all have to talk about the same topic, it's tricky. But if you said go write something creative that's independent, I say put it on a forum, let them read each other's work, and then you can reply to them and attach anything you want. You can not only type feedback but attach the items. Um, but you can also assign groups. You can make group forms. You can make group assignments. So there's a lot of subtle settings there. The thing to do would be come up with exactly what you're trying to do, and you describe it to me, and, and like on Moodle.org, post it. That particular scenario, I'd like to try it. Because I'm thinking that when you give feedback, you can reattach it. 